Hey, this is Jacob Moreno from Arometer Company, and today I'm going to show you how to configure the sensors for your newly registered IC10 device. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our dashboard. We're going to go to the unit we want to configure, and we're going to go from there to the gear icon. So once we go there, it takes us to our device configuration. From here, I can name my unit. So in this case, let's go ahead and just name it. Name it Citrus. You can put in a longitude and a latitude uh, for the mapping purposes of the program. Uh, but we're not going to do that today. Let's dive right into the sensor configuration. So once you open this tab up, it allows you to name your sensors. So in this case today, I'm using a one foot sensor and a two foot sensor. So I can go ahead and fill those in. And then I'm not going to use any of the other sensors. So I'm actually going to turn these off. So I can turn these off. I can leave SM3, SM4. I can leave that. I can make them blank, or I can actually just write the word off. So that's typically what I like to do, just to show that I'm not using it and that I have turned it off and there's no other reason that it's not working. Okay. So there we go. Now, if I want to average the sensors, I can also do that. So if I want an average between the one foot and the two foot, for example, I click the box here in the same line and the one line, and I can get an average on the graph of these two sensors. But today I'm not gonna do that, so let's just go ahead and leave those unchecked. So that's the sensor configuration for the moisture sensors, very simple. Now we're gonna set up the alerts. So setting up the alerts gives us a, a different view on our gauges. So our gauges, uh, which is our real-time view of what's actually happening with your sensors, uh, they give you a color code. Uh, blue's really wet, Green's perfect, red's too dry. So it's really simple to interpret. We're gonna set those limits now on our one foot sensor. We're gonna go ahead and set the low limit to 10 and we're gonna set the high limit to 50. And these are arbitrary numbers, but these are numbers I typically use and you know they are, they are relative, relatively uh, useful numbers to use. So I put 20 here on the low end for our two foot and I will put 70 for our high limit. So there we are. So now we've created our, our limits on our, on our gauges. After that, we're gonna to go to the graph threshold. The graph threshold is a very similar process uh, or a very similar feature to the gauge threshold. It's just gonna be in the graph format. So we have our gauges that have thresholds and we also want our graph to have that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and pick a number that kind of is right in between the two sensors we have at 15 and 60. I like to have that just cause it's an average of the two. And then we're gonna hit enable. So there we are there and we come down a little bit further and we're gonna to go to our frost alerts. So our frost alarm, if you utilize a, a air temperature sensor on the IC10, you can actually use it for frost alarms. And you can go ahead and just put whatever number you want in, your, your phone number, the, the grower's phone number, and you're gonna hit enable. Uh, basically this will allow you to get those frost alerts at anything below 34 degrees. So it will send you a text message and you get that information. Now the last tab in here is the sharing tab. And the sharing tab allows us uh, to add a user to the account. So if you want to add a colleague or, 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 a, uh, or a consultant, if you want to add them in, you can actually add their, their username in. And now one thing we have to remember, they also must register and create, or they must create an account, I should say, uh, using their email. So they got to uh, create an account and then you can use their email and get them into your account so they can see your data. If you, you, if you use them as a view only, uh, basically they can just see what's going on or you can declare them an administrator and they can make changes you know, based, on, uh, uh, based on your permission, of course, but they can do that. Uh, before you add any new user, <laughs> I, would hit, I would hit save, most definitely. So once we've done all this work of, of filling in the fields, doing all the information, uh, before we, again, before we do the sharing, go ahead and hit save so that we make sure everything is saved and we don't have to do it again. And we can come back and add a new user in the sharing if we want to. So we go ahead and hit save. It takes us back to our dashboard. Uh, if you want to see what, what the changes, you know, if they're in effect, we hit the graph data icon here and we can see everything that we put in. So in this case, we got our one foot sensor. We have our thresholds, our blue, our green, our red. And we have, it looks a little bit different because we use different numbers. If you remember uh, 10 and 50 as opposed to 20 and 70. So we can see blue's really wet, green's perfect, red's too dry. And then down here on the graph, we set those graph thresholds. The blue down here all on the bottom is really wet. The white's perfect, it's the spot we wanna be in. And the brown is just 
too, too dry. So again, everything's really simple, really easy to install. And that is how you configure your sensors for your new IC tech.